under his influence in such a way that there is no doubt that there is a God who is all powerful. Pray in the Spirit more than you ever have before. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Worship in the Spirit. He is amazing. He is amazing. I cannot... You know, every time you see, he can be wind or fire or oil. He can swirl through our atmosphere. He can nudge us. He can prepare people's hearts to receive the word we bring. There's no limit to what he can do. But we limit our relationship with him. He is so wonderful. So wonderful. And he's the only one of the Godhead that carries the unforgivable sin. But if you crave him, you'll never, you'll never blaspheme him. You want to know Jesus? Holy Spirit's the one. He said, I'll take everything that Jesus tells me and I'll give it to you. Holy Spirit is amazing. He's wonderful. And if you are his temple, do you know how amazing that is? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the new wineskin. Your heart has been removed, that heart of flesh, that stony heart's gone. And now you've got a new a heart within you that's full of the wine of the Holy Spirit. Because in Romans 5, 5, the Holy Spirit just pours into your heart and releases the love of God to flow into your heart. So if we're never looking for our own love and bridges to know the Holy Spirit to know. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He is... Powerful, militant, loving, gentle, compassionate. He's the spirit of prayer. He's the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ. Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Holy Spirit. Spirit of judgment, spirit of burning, spirit of intercession, spirit of love. It's all Holy Spirit. Sevenfold spirits of God. Spirit of the Lord rests upon you, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. And so there are areas in each one of our lives. Where we hinder the intoxication, the, the move, we, we hinder our, our yielding to the Holy Spirit. Whether we've woke up sin or whether we're just, oh, I don't want to look like an idiot. I don't want to do something that I'm going to regret, you know, I'm not sure the Holy Spirit will never embarrass you. He will never embarrass you. He will never force his will upon you. Although, he might drive you. Because he drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. In one gospel it says, led in another gospel, he drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. We need to allow him to do what he wants to do in our lives. We need to be influenced, come under his influence. Spirit, soul, and body. And part of that is when you were born again, this is something that we're not ever very told. In Genesis, in Exodus 31, 
you know, we're, we're often taught that the Holy Spirit didn't fill anybody until after the cross. But in Exodus 31, there's Bezalel. Bless you, that. He filled Bezalel. He said, oh, in Exodus 31, uh, 2, I have called my name Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, the child of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and ability and understanding and intelligence and knowledge and in all kinds of craftsmanship to devise skillful works. And it goes on like that. So Bezalel was filled in order to fulfill his destiny. You are filled with God for the call of God upon your life. What he did for Bezalel, he'll do for you. And he was filled before the cross. He was filled before Pentecost. So, you know, again, you know, we put the Holy Spirit in a box where he doesn't fill anybody until Pentecost. No, he filled others in the Old Testament as well. Turn over to 2 Samuel, chapter 10. This is Saul. Verse 7. No, it must be 1 Samuel. Yeah. 1 Samuel. Chapter 10, verse 6. The Spirit of the Lord, this is the prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily, and you'll show yourself to be a prophet with them, and you will be turned into another man. So when we get filled with the Holy Spirit and we learn to surrender to Him, we actually become different people. Who wants to be different? Aren't we all crying out to be transformed, to be made more like Christ, to be more fruitful, to live more like the fruit of the Spirit? He says, when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, you're going to be turned into another man. And down in um, in verse 10, when they came to the hill, behold, a band of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came mightily upon him, and he spoke. Saul spoke under divine inspiration. You know, I've gone through my Bible and anything that relates to the Holy Spirit, I've colored in blue. And it is on so many pages in the Bible, even in books where the Holy Spirit is not mentioned, that there is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, whether it's fire or wind or flame or oil or whatever it might be, or breath, there is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And we talk about going around Jericho and how they were quiet, but when they blew their trumpets and when they yelled in one voice, you know, the, the walls came down. Let me tell you, it wasn't the sound of the trumpets, although that was important. It wasn't the sound of their voices, although that was important. What was important was that the breath of the Holy Spirit that filled their lungs and came out as they roared and filled the trumpets as they blew. It was the Holy Spirit. They had to yield. They had to blow the trumpets. They had to yell, but it was the Holy Spirit. We have to yield. We have to learn how to yield more. And he'll teach us. Ask him to take you into the school of the Spirit. Ask him. Because then he'll teach you how to ascend. He'll teach you how to move in the Spirit realm. He'll show you things in the constellation you've never seen before. But ask him, take me, Holy Spirit, into the school of the Spirit. And teach me what my Father wants me to know. And if you pray that prayer, you will be taught differently. Louisa, you won't be taught the same thing as Karen. Karen, you won't be taught the same thing as Caroline. Caroline, you won't be taught the same thing as Gwen. Every one of us will be taught something different because the Father has a different plan and purpose for each of our lives and he wants us to have the knowledge that he wants us to have. And we go around like a, like a scattergun at a smorgasbord and we'll say, I'll have a bit of this and I'll have a bit of that and I'll have a bit of this. And the Holy Spirit saying, if I could just get you laser focused, <laughs> if I could just get you to concentrate on one course at a time, it's not a smorgasbord. There is one course at a time. Come to that one thing that I've called you to and you'll get enough revelation out of that, enough life out of that, enough power out of that so you get everything you need for where you are right now. When you finish partaking of that meal, I'll move you on to the next. But while you go smorgasbording from one ministry to another, from one thing to another, from me from one book to another, while you go smorgasbording, the power of the Holy Spirit is diluted. And you are not being filled with the knowledge and the truth the Father wants you to have. You're filling it with what your head says you need to have. Oh. Oh. So I love reading. 
and you know how I love reading. I have a whole one box of the new ones that are coming in. And I'm... <sighs> but I've been so convicted. Then now I sit there and I say, okay, what is it you want me to read right now because I'm in your school? What is it the Father wants me to know right now? I will not be distracted by anything else. What is the one thing he wants me to know? It's making it flesh. It's got to become flesh. It's got to become flesh in you. And if it, if it doesn't, we're not as powerful, we're not as strong. God will always be powerful and strong. And he can use a donkey and he can make a rooster crow and he can beat Peter and he can do all sorts of things. But he's looking for sons to manifest so that creation is put to rest. Because creation is worthy of the manifestation of the sons of God. So he's looking for sons. Slash all the sons. That will put creation to peace. Yeah. So you've got a choice of how much you allow the word of God to possess you. Yeah. It's your choice. It'll either be a logos, it'll be a rhema, or it'll be manifest flesh to flesh. Yeah. Never take the word. Just, just sit with it. Mm. Allow the Holy Spirit to wrap it in your heart, to let it come out of your mouth. But it can't be like a, even just a rhema. A rhema is awesome. It's better than the logos because like every uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that word is, is rhema. But when, when it actually becomes, when the word becomes flesh in you, it is as Jesus is walking the earth. It is oh, as Jesus. Yes. So you can actually minister as Jesus ministered when he walked the earth because he was a man under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit as we are. So you, we can have that. You can have the same um, measure of ministry, the same measure. The word can become flesh in you as it did in Jesus because it's the same Holy Spirit that's doing the work. Yeah. But we have to yield to it. We have to hunger for it. We have to want it. And you can no longer be surface value. Don't talk to me about logic and reason because the word of God is all about mysteries. It's all about faith. It's, it's taking things when you don't, I don't understand that God. I don't understand how Christ to me is the hope of glory. Come on, get that. But I receive it by yes. faith. And so I, I will receive the mystery. <coughs> it's receiving the mysteries. And as you walk in the mysteries, you'll find that the power and the presence of God wraps around you like nothing you've ever experienced before. Because you accept the mystery. You accept the mystery. You're not trying to sort it out, you're not trying to think it through. There's no way my peanut brain will ever think through anything God has done. It doesn't matter if I have an IQ of a genius. I never will be able to. But I embrace the mysteries. I embrace the mysteries. That's faith. Embracing the mysteries. And as I embrace the mysteries, he'll give me a layer of As I embrace the mystery, the revelation deepens. Mm. And then it deepens again. And it deepens mm. again to we actually. But none of this works without the Holy Spirit. None of this works without the Holy Spirit. He's the one who gives us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. To understand the mysteries. So we so as we ask the Holy Spirit to see us where we are, but to take hold of us, to influence us, to bring us under his intoxication that we would um, be so yielded to the Holy Spirit that he places us in the school of the Spirit and that he teaches each one of us what the Father wants each one of us individually to know and there will be an overlapping for the corporate house but the, the, the important thing is that you know what the Father wants you to know. 
Don't be sidetracked at this time by ministries, books, CDs, podcasts, or anything else that look exciting, look wonderful, and look great. Unless you know it's what the Holy Spirit has for you to be involved in. No longer small response. One course at a time. One course at a time. Holy Spirit is amazing. He is so amazing. He can turn the hearts of 